Greetings calculus students, this is Mr. Meiring one more time. In this brief video we're going to look at how we can estimate the instantaneous rate of change uh, numerically and graphically. So that's two of the three main ways that we can look at functions and equations and graphs. So numerically and graphically estimating the instantaneous rate of change. So again just as a reminder numerically means that you're working with a table. So uh, here are two different examples of a table. Pretty simple, nothing too exciting. And that's exactly what estimating the IROC you do. You just look at your table of values. You're not going to guess anything else. You're not going to guess anything outside of these values. These are the only values that you get. So that the, these are the only values you get to use. So notice in this table we have the x value of 0, 1, 2, 3, our independent variable. And I'm asked to estimate at 1.5, which is right smack in the middle of 1 and 2. Whereas in this table we have 1, 3, 5, uh, different change in the x values and we're asked to estimate at 4 which is smack dab in the middle so um, and that's going to be the case for every single one of these examples where we are asked to estimate the IROC numerically the value you're going to be asked to estimate at is always going to be found right in the middle of these two uh, could it be at one of the x values sure um, and the, you use a similar thought process that way but for my tests, my assessments, and everything else, it will always be in the middle. So that's the way we'll look at it. 1.5 is right in the middle of 1 and 2, obviously, which means I have to use these values. IROC, you're looking for the instantaneous rate of change. We can't find instantaneous rate of change at 1.5 because we don't have that value. And we don't have a function for that. So we're forced to use the values around it. So really, you estimate with the AROC on the interval 1 to 2. So we would just do 7 minus 2.5 all over 2 minus 1, which of course is going to equal 4.5 divided by 1, and our estimation is 1.5, or sorry, 4.5. So um, for the other one, same idea, 4 is smack dab in the middle, so smack dab in the middle of 3 and 5, which means you have to use 6.5 and 4.5. So we find the AROC on that because we have two points. So it's going to be an average rate of change that we're using to estimate the instantaneous. So I always like to do the second one first. If that makes sense. I like to do the later x value first. So 4.5 minus 6.5. And that would be all over 5 minus 3. And so as we set that up, this would equal negative 2 divided by 2, which is equal to negative 1. And so that would be our estimate as to the instantaneous rate of change. Um, don't forget units. It is a rate of change. So whatever your y unit would be, would be divided by the whatever the unit of x, as we talked about in our other video. So don't forget about units as you're doing all of your estimates, but that's just looking at the rate of change. Um, so now moving on to graphically. That doesn't need a reminder. That's pretty obvious. That's what the graph if you have a graph in front of you, you can get a little bit better as your approximation, but it all depends on how well you draw tangent lines. And so uh, you take a look at your graph. Here's the 0.46. This is at I, or where I want to find the instantaneous rate of change, or estimate it at least. So we want to find our IROC at x equals 4. So now we can actually look at what's happening at 4 and so you have to draw in your tangent line to the best of your ability uh, to match that up. So you take a look at your graph, find your point, lay your ruler right on top of that and this is exactly how we estimate every single time and we're going to draw in a tangent line. So remember instantaneous rate of change is found using a tangent line so we're going to draw that tangent line in sitting right on the graph follows the slope at that point. So my IROC is going to be the slope of that line that we have there. So now we can find any two points on that line. It can be any two points that you use. 4, 6 is obviously a good one since it's given to us. You can choose any point. I like to choose the point which is on the x-axis because it just makes it easier for your algebra. So this is then the point. We'd say that this is 10.25, 0. So you have two points now, and you're going to find your average rate of change between those two. So we have then 
minus 6 all over 0 minus 4. And so what that is going to get you is equal to 4.25 divided by negative 4. And when that gets divided out, negative 1.0625. So that is now our estimate to your instantaneous rate of change. Um, it is it is the slope of a tangent line, which we've defined as actual instantaneous and not an estimate, right? So if you're finding the slope of a tangent line, it is the actual instantaneous. However, this is still considered an estimate because we had to draw in the tangent line, right? We didn't weren't given one. We don't know if this is a great one. It looks pretty good, but you know, like I said, the better your estimate is is based on the better your tangent line is. So. That's how we estimate numerically and graphically to find the instantaneous rate of change approximation.